This video is the book on the XP Deus 1 metal detector. And I have a website called iratemetaldetectors.com. And I think I really dropped the ball on this detector. I just bought the Deus 2 and I have been studying very, very hard. And my research has taken me to see what I missed with detector number one. Although I think there is some sound logic to why I went other directions instead of going beyond the maybe 200 to 300 hours uh, that I went using uh, the Deus One. But without further ado, let's, let's make me look bad for having it rated so low on my scale. This is a legendary detector. I've got an interesting test I'd like to show you. Me thinks I want to see this test. Now what I didn't want to do here was dig a hole and throw the coin in the bottom of it and show you how deep it is. We're all wise to that and we all know that is not a fair test because the machine picks up the hole and so on. What I wanted you to conduct was a real life test underneath undisturbed ground. So what we've done, we faced off the bank and we've burrowed two holes in the face of the bank. I think me garden's about to get a big hole. And this is why we're cold, wet and covered in mud. The hole number one is 14 inches deep, which is about 34 centimetres. Hole number two is 17 inches deep, which is about 43 centimetres. We've got two targets here. We've got a Tudor spoon and a copper coin, which is about 30 millimetres in diameter. What I'm going to do is put the copper coin into hole number one and see if we can get a good response from the X35 13 by 11 coil. Now the program we're using is the deep program. The only changes I'm making is to the frequency. I'm putting it onto four kilohertz. But before I carry on with the test, I just need to pass a coil over the top of the ground and show you there's no targets in the hole. While I'm talking about ground, this ground is quite mineralized. It's showing three to four bars on a mineralization scale. So it's quite difficult. If you carry out this test, you may get more depth or less depth depending on your soil and surrounding contamination. So here we go. Let's get on with the test, pass a coil over the top just to show you there's nothing there. Slight ticking, but that's some mineralization. Let's put target number one into the hole number one. It's getting it quite nicely, actually. So perhaps we should have dug the holes a little bit deeper. Let's raise the coil. Perhaps one, two inches above the ground. Now on with the second test. The spoon in the hole at 17 inches. Here we go. That's a lot stronger, that's a good target. Raising the coil. Perhaps two inches above it. Let's go into boost mode and see if that makes any difference. We're in boost mode now, four kilohertz. definitely makes a difference. I've been detecting uh, almost 10 years now and uh, I would consider myself a high brown belt, low black belt level of uh, 
metal detecting understanding. Sorry, just binged the new season of Cobra Kai. I'm a teacher who understands that every human has multiple intelligences, and we can be really high in some areas and really low in others. And the tools that you choose to get any job done has to fit your brain, has to fit your worldview. The beauty and the curse of the dais is it gives you an overwhelming amount of variables, uh, screens that you could get all sorts of information on, functions that you can adjust. And that is great. It is also overwhelming at the same time. Remember those old Casio watches that you have like four buttons to get through the entire navigation of them? I love them but they would frustrate me. And I probably didn't see all of the screens in that. A metal detector is like the extreme version of a uh, of navigating a Casio watch. You kind of have to have that memory to, okay, I'm looking for this. It's, it's like a map. You have to have like that roadmap memory. And my God, if you say roadmap to me, I, I'm the first to admit I get lost. And a quick note on Merrill's progress with the Deus 2. I'm sticking with it because I see so much capacity in the Deus 2, but I'm ready to throw the bleeping thing. And back to the Deus 1. It, the universe of the Deus and like all of these like secret options, OMG, it frustrated me. But that doesn't mean that I didn't have success with it. This was September of 2020 when I had more and better hair. We got silver! We got silver! We got silver! Tell me what it is! This worked out for us last time. We got silver! We... I'm running. I'm running. It's a real. The important takeaway from this is that you don't need to really tinker with it that much. You could use the given programs in the detector and you could get some really, really great results uh, like we had there. Uh, the button was a little bit more impressive of a pull depth-wise, but of course, yeah, you're not going to argue with a 1700s silver coin. I've pulled dime-sized targets at 9 inches with the dais. So why did you move on from the dais if it worked so well? There were other technologies that came on, uh, such as simultaneous multi-frequency. And by the time I started using the dais, which I think was about uh, 2020, I bought mine in 2020, it had been a 10-year-old detector, or almost 10-year-old detector, and we had simultaneous multi-frequency out already. And instead of finely tuning uh, that one frequency and changing other variables Simultaneous multi-frequency, and I'm specifically talking about the MindLab Equinox, it just opened up a whole new universe in terms of signals. You would go over the same ground that you have hunted to death, and new stuff would appear. And it, it, instead of just one you know, uh, frequency, the AI of the Equinox, uh, it was groundbreaking. It was a big change. And it made me put down the dais, perhaps prematurely. Dais 2, that's not going to happen. I see so much capacity in the dais 2. But that's what made me put down the dais 1. Look who I found. Hi. Who's this? It's me, Danny Dais. Danny Dais. There's something to be said about the style of the dais. Because... My son, from the time that he started detecting, he loved the dais. Something made him gravitate to that. And we have a guest here. Right now, he's much bigger. The voice is deeper. Hello. And what what, what made you like the dais other than other detectors? It was lightweight. It was easy to swing. My headphones are about to fall off, but they aren't. Eh, you'll get used to them. You, you could adjust them. Um, he's got the waterproof kit, so if he so chooses, he could go underwater with this. <laughs> he said the waterproof kid. 
Yeah, it is waterproof. It, meaning that it's uh, a... Uh, kid. Oh, kid. Yeah, you're right. You're a waterproof kid. Yep. Young man. All right, so get ready for this absurdity. You saw that kit that he was wearing around his neck, and you saw the wire. That is because there's this, and there is this. There's technology in both, and you have to charge both. The coil actually blinks, and there's no wire that's connecting it. So when you stick this below the water, this loses signal to this. It does have a beach mode, but I question its original design or its original intention as a beach metal detector. With the exception of pulse induction, most of the top beach metal detectors are simultaneous multi-frequency. There is nothing, no detector on the market that can match the ergonomics of the Deus 1. Even to an extent, the Deus 2. Portability. And then there's this. You don't even need this. A lot of detectorists, instead of using the remote, they just go with headphones. And there is so much audio optimization and uh, configurability to this that y you really know what the signal is, how big it is, the shape of it, just by ear, how deep it is. And then... There's the XY screen. Firstly, go to Options, Configuration, Profile, and then just select the minus button or the plus button, depending on what graphic you want. Here it says XY, that's perfect, so we click the back button, and now we've got Day as Fast with an XY graphic. There's no need to save anything because this gets remembered into the global memory. So next time you turn the Deus on, it will remember that Deus Fast is now using an XY screen. Let's crack on and test some targets and let you see both screens side by side. The targets I'm using are Hot Rock, Nail. He's gonna say it. Coke. Coke. Very thin foil. Slightly bigger foil, a silver hammered coin, a larger silver hammered coin, a large milled silver coin, a rusty bottle cap, a modern bottle cap, and some misshaped iron. Right, let's crack on and start off with the hot rock. As you can see, that's a left right orientation. Simulates ground. I remember high school math class, people trying to show me the graphing calculator and how to use it. Now let's try the nail. Small nail. And as you can see, the XY screen is showing it as being ferrous but the horseshoe graphic is showing it as non-ferrous. And this is because I'm using the hot program. I, I, I don't know how to say this. I'm a monkey. Which doesn't use any discrimination. It uses minus 6.4. So everything it sees will register as non-ferrous. Now the way to make ferrous indicate to the left is by introducing discrimination. Let me demonstrate. So we've got no ferrous reading. If we wanted to see a ferrous reading, we need to introduce some discrimination. I often wonder what goes through the heads of Deus users. It is probably more complex than what goes through my head. I'm going to set it to about five. God, I burn jello sometimes. And now the coke. That's a soft signal with a top to bottom orientation. Just a quick note about Coke and Hot Rock. Hot Rock is discriminated by the ground balance circuit,
Coke is rejected by the discrimination circuit, they're two totally different items. Hot Rocks ground, Coke is like, like coal really. Thank you, you changed my life. Now for the wafer thin piece of foil. Now let's try a stronger piece of foil. Moving on, the small silver hammered coin. That's better, that's giving a good positive signal there. And the bigger silver hammered coin. And you can hear the tone increasing. So long story short, it gives you more visual information uh, that you can uh, make an inference with if you one understand how to get to these screens and to study up but honestly both are both are doable uh, it's just it's more work it's a higher maintenance detector so i, I downloaded oh, not downloaded I, I recreated the sonar program and that is really good at notching out, uh, not notching out, at uh, seeing through iron. If you're in an iron heavy environment, that is the program from what I have read that you want to run. So I copied the, uh, yeah, all of the elements to it and we're going to try it today on the 1600s permission. All right, Deus, it's go time for you. Let's see what you got in iron land. But let's dig it. Whoa! Hey, Jeff! Whoa! That was just uh, something from um, uh, the bridal uh, the horse. Yeah, you know. Uh, long story short, uh, the sonar program, it's great to use in iron settings where there's tons and tons and tons of iron it will really help you see and pull those signals that are masked in uh, with all of the iron signals. So if you have a lot of nails, a lot of uh, old stuff that was dropped, uh, old farm field, oh, you're going to love that sonar program. Um, but I'll tell you this, like switching topics a little bit. In modern parks, it is highly mediocre. The Deus One. Yeah, not sonar program, the Deus One. I, I don't know any, I know one detectorist that uses, that features the Deus as his go-to detector in New York City. And uh, again, you know, the settings of New York City in terms of metal detecting, if you don't know how to dig in trash, you're not going to do very well. Almost everybody swings an Equinox as of early 2022, I'm starting to see some legends and some Deus twos out there, but uh, it never really was a fixture in New York detecting because there's so much garbage in our soil. I just made New York sound absolutely fantastic, but it's true. All right, so let's finish this video by visiting my website, iratemetaldetectors.com. And if I remember correctly, I have the Deus one in sixth place of all of the it should be sixth uh rank six uh De xp day is two um and let, let's go through this i have 16 ratings depth separation uh sound inference target id inference ergonomics build durability battery life swag or add-ons uh and there's there's a um a rubric to this uh, up top uh, that you could see criteria. Uh, these are the definitions of all of these. And of course there's a link, but l let's go through this uh, together. Um, pinpoint quality, navigation, handles electromagnetic interference, utility in water, saltwater beach, uh, trashy park, handles iron, and relative value. And these either have uh, uh, scales out of 5 or to 10. And here's my write-ups on all of this. 
Depending upon how you quantify FBS full band spectrum on the MindLab E-Track, which was the one in fifth place, this is the highest rated one frequency detector on my list. The Deus was before its time and it is legendary. It is a very passionate fan base and many did not deviate from the Deus 1 until the Deus 2 came out. This detector has more variables uh, than other detectors uh, to master and a user learns a lot about metal detecting by taking everything in. I failed on that quest. I bought the MindLab Equinox first and that machine was too formidable for me to commit more time to the dais. Interestingly, despite vast capabilities, XP decided to create an SMF simultaneous multi-frequency metal detector, which is really an FMF, uh, in the dais too. The reason that happened was because the margin for, ever, uh, for error is smaller uh, for a user with a SMF paired with a great algorithm, just like the Equinox. My final thoughts on this uh, are uh, that the, the entire field, the entire industry of metal detecting, in terms of new metal detectors coming out, they are all based on an algorithm that marries multiple frequencies and triages signals. And the dais, uh, you could switch frequencies, uh, a lot of different frequencies on the dais one, but it was really one at a time use. And there has been a sea change. Everything is going towards simultaneous multi-frequency. And the reason for that is it gives the user a larger margin for error. It, it lets you see more. It, like when I first started swinging the Equinox, I couldn't believe how many signals there were. More just appeared. Because when you're tinkering with all of these different signals with, with all these different functions rather you're going to be missing a lot but if you have something that could let in everything you're going to hear more it overwhelmed some people some people said it was way too noisy of a detector i think that's because it let everything in uh, that's what i liked about it but um deus one it, it it has its use um, i put in terms of recommendations uh, that if you see something, if you see a Deus one maybe in the $500 price range, you grab it. That's a no-brainer. Um, you know, that, that unless if you're going to get the Deus two, that is. But, um, you know, it, 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 look at it almost like the Mona Lisa. You know, there were arguably greater paintings that came later on, but it, it was a stepping stone. It was something that brought painting to a higher level, and the dais most definitely brought metal detecting to a higher level. For simpletons like myself, I struggled, although if, if I didn't have that Equinox at the time, perhaps I would have committed. I almost wished that I bought this in 2012, but that was the year that I started metal detecting. It didn't make sense for me to master that detector then because there were technologies that I believed are superior. But um, it, it, it is a great piece of history. It is still a formidable detector. I own 20 detectors, and for it to be number six on my list, uh, that says a lot. And there's other simultaneous multi-frequency detectors below this on the list. So this is a really special detector. But uh, would I recommend it to somebody who's buying one in 2022? I would not. All right. Thoughts. I, I want to read your comments on this. So um, I, I know a lot of people are going <laughs> to give me a hard time. It's got an understandably passionate following. And I, I get it. If you've been using it for 10 years and you're a master user, it makes sense that you continue with it or move on to the dais too. But um it, it's a really interesting detector. Thanks, everybody.